Yeah. Um, well, we got a, a question from Cameron Keelty, who, who um, is watching on YouTube, and he, he's, he's asked, have you ever rode the double with Ben Davison? That's a good question. So Ben is obviously an incredible scholar. He He's beat me the one time I raced him. And that oh, really? was one of, yeah, so I raced him at the in summer of 2018. I raced him in the U23 um, singles trials. I, I knew I wasn't going to be able to go. Um, two U23s, even if I won, but my coach signed me up and told me the day before. So we had a we had a race where I um I really underestimated him and thought I could just get out to a big lead and he'd shut down. And um, now knowing Ben, that was very foolish of me. He's a very stubborn, very strong racer, and uh, I learned a lot from that race. So um, no, we have not. We we have rode one time together. Uh, it was actually at head of the charles this year one of the days leading up to it we got out in an old double and did like a four and a half k row <laughs> um but no we have not spent any time really training in it together but we both really want to it's just uh it's just a matter of time and finding out a, a good time to do it that's a great question thank you cameron for that that question um clark i want to take you um a bit forward now from uh the junior championships uh, back uh, to last year um, the Olympic qualification regatta, I mean, uh, they're incredibly tense affairs, that World Championships before the Olympics, where qualification spots are on the line. I mean, how did that compare, that experience going into your first senior World Championships? Yeah, it's definitely, it's a totally different environment than, you know, any other race I had been to before. Um, I think I was, after the heat, I was really confident. Um, just in the, just in the, I guess the grit of our boat, we knew, I knew we weren't going to completely fall off the back. I knew we were always going to be in contention and I knew if we were in contention with 500, 750 to go, we were going to be able to, you know, throw some punches in that the last bit and, and get up in a, in a strong position. But I think, yeah, it's, it's, abs it was absolutely stressful. Um, especially with the Olympic qualification and that, that semifinal race was absolutely, um, it was really high stakes. And then getting third in that and then knowing that the final was just, you know, essentially for medals or for fun or whatever you want to call it. It was, it was total weight off my shoulders. And then that, that the senior world's final is just, you know, sitting at the line, just I'm, more relaxed than I'd ever been before. Really. I'm just going to stop you there in terms of, you know, uh, the semifinal, because that, that was a pretty decent German four that you were racing with Max Planner and Felix Wimberger, two guys from the German eight world champions. And, um, I guess this is around about 1,500 metres in the semi. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we should tell people that don't know that if you're, you know, if you if you finish in the final, you're automatically qualified for the Olympics. So I, I think it was quite special, your last um, last 1,000 or last 500 metres in this semi. Yeah, you know, I think we we were planning on, you know, sticking around and not really worrying about our, specific placement as much as you know whether we were going to be in contention or not and i think we rode well enough together where basically the whole since we got since we got the lineup together i was always saying you know like if we're within a boat length with someone and we need to pass them to qualify like i i'm i was just so confident that we were going to be able to do it and it was it really just everything clicked and once um once our bow seat tom pezik you know called a bump it was all you know and I, I feel like I didn't even do anything and everyone behind me was just so ready to go. You know, we'd been getting ready for that move for so many months that it was almost like it was just effortless. I feel like I was just almost holding them back as we just got faster and faster and faster past them and, you know, achieved it. There's some good shots. I mean, that shot of you looking out the boat, I guess that's to the polls because you must have thought, you know, can I maybe make uh, second place in this um, in this race? which you were pretty close on making that second place at the finish. I wish I could say um, that it was at the polls, but it was definitely at the German because I remember through the line, I was, we slowed down a lot through the line, which was a hundred percent my fault because I was, I did not even glance at the polls. And I remember the second we finished and I hear like beep, beep. I was like, who is that? And I see that we got, we just missed out on beating the polls. And I was like, that is so on me. I totally like was not paying attention and we slowed down, but um, you know, at the end of the day, it wasn't too important of a, of a thing, but definitely, you know, so it's a learning process. I learn a little bit each race. I try to learn a little bit each race at least. 
I didn't get a photograph of you with the fist pump, but um, guys look pretty satisfied with that result there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, that that's obviously the that's the plan, and that's the uh, the ideal scenario is to get through that A B semi, get to the A final, and then then the final, no matter what happens, even if you flip, you know, you're gonna you're gonna have that boat at the Olympics. So we were super happy. So here you are, at nineteen start of. Uh, a FISA A final in the men's four Olympic class event. Just uh, describe how you were feeling on the start there, what your memories were of that that particular race. Yeah, I think, you know, I think by that point we were all so satisfied with the work we had put in. And, um, you know, we had been in the boat for less than a month and, you know, to throw together a few good races and end up there, we were all super happy and proud of each other to begin with. But I think, um, you know, it was some weird conditions that we weren't used to, uh, used to. So I think that um, that ended up us. That I think that you know ca- that helped definitely was one of the reasons that kept us out of the medals. But uh, I think we had another good race there, and I think in, th- in that photo we're all pretty excited to get off and have one more rip together before it's back to you know seat racing and switching around for you know a year. But now at this point, two years. Decent start, five hundred meters. Um pretty much level with the Australians through that. And then um, second 500 wasn't, wasn't the quickest, but you think that might have been something to do with the conditions on the far side of the course, maybe? Uh, I mean, I don't think it's that necessarily, you know, that the, our final dip was not an outlier in terms of our um, race profile. I'd say, I think it was more just, you know, it's, it's always, it's always tough to know. You know, sometimes sometimes you get it right, sometimes you get it wrong, thinking about how much energy everyone else is putting into it. You know, like in the semi, I remember Australia, Germany, and the Poles were all like dead level, 500, 1K, and we were sitting back, you know, a length or so. And I remember thinking, like, I just, I don't think the Germans are going to be able to hold, you know, the Australians in the Poles' pace. And then we were right, and then we went through them. And I think, you know, in this in this scenario, we're, we're sitting back, we're not, no, we're not killing ourselves. We're confident in our sprint. And I'm thinking, you know, well, Australia's fifth. We're thinking they were going to be crushing everybody. So maybe everyone's going way too fast and everyone's about to fall off the pace. You know, there's just in the moment, it's um, it's all it's all guesswork, honestly, to a certain extent. And then you, you had a magical sprint in the last uh, this is at 1500 meters. You had a magical sprint in the last 500 second quickest last 500 in the field. Um, just behind those young Romanians, which an average age of 21, I'm, they're a little bit older than you, but uh, certainly a, a magical combination. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think um, I think that's where we really started to lean into it at the at the 1K, and then started to build it up more and more. And we were totally spent by the line there, and the the Italians just nipped us. And then, you know, GB was less than a bow length off. The Romanians were you know, about a boat length off a little bit less. And I think, you know, obviously everyone wants to end up on the, on the, the upper side of the, of the photo finishes and whatnot. And unfortunately there, we got fifth instead of fourth with the Italians where it was just such a, such a nail biter. But, um, you know, that's the kind of stuff that always motivates you to, you know, train harder, work harder, row smarter and yeah. uh, gets, gets you excited for the next, next go. So did you make any friends during – I mean, you, you, you're a very sociable guy. Did you make any any new friends during that championship? Yeah, you know, there's always um, there's always the, the, the kind of separation between countries, I'd say, um, when racing is going on. And then I think racing ends and everyone's definitely a lot more friendly. I'd say most of the friends and people I met were actually just American rowers who weren't at the training center, right, because we sent a full squad, so it's a – massive amount of people but out of the training center only be, only came the eight four and pair so all of the scholars all of the pair and adaptive rowers and the whole entire women's team were all people i had pretty much never met with the exception of a few so did you make any trades for, with your racing vests let me think i actually did let me i'm trying to remember what i did exactly i ha- i got a I got a Japanese polo from someone who was there because it had the Olympic rings on it. And I thought oh, it was cool. Yeah. Um, because I remember I had, or I have so many like US rowing team USA, just polos because it seemed like every year we, I went to a world championship, they'd give me at least two. 
And with the juniors, this was now my fourth one. So, I mean, I legitimately had between like eight and 12 of these things. Yeah. And I remember thinking like, I'll almost go two to one trying to get any other kind of, you know, cause I, I like the, like the kind of cotton polo look. So the, I got a, I got a Japanese one and then I got mm. a German one with someone who actually wasn't even racing there, but he was a, a stu- he's a student at Northeastern and rose there. Yeah. So I got, um, I traded with him. I traded with this, uh, a Japanese guy for a Japanese polo, which was cool. Um, and then I think I got a, I got a Dutch kind of like tech shirt thing that I gave, I got for like a sun shirt that I was like wearing or something. Cause sun shirts, it's just, it's the same thing. I like yeah. the sun shirts. I wear them when I row all the time, but just with such a surplus. In them. <laughs> Did you have any chance to look at the racing at the world championships? Um, you know, in terms of the, the races you saw, I mean, I, I know the singles race was quite a special race. I don't know if you had a chance to, to watch that or anything else. Yeah. Well, so the, the four was, you know, Saturday and then the, most most of the other championship races or a finals were sunday so i was definitely there watching and the single the whole the whole regatta the single was definitely the most exciting thing to follow and keep track of because it was back and forth you know times and placements and i mean that was the most evenly matched you know in 2016 there was you know mahe and demir martin were back to back and you know side to side and it was a photo finish and then the final this last year was like Okay, it's that except it's everybody in the race, you know. <laughs> um, so it was it was super exciting. Then of course, uh, watching the eight, watching the US eight come down, um, cheering them on, and them also qualifying was great and another massive relief because they they weren't as lucky as us. They made the F- a final, but if they got last, they still would not have qualified. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had a that bit of a trickier a tr- trickier run there. Yeah, that must have been tense in the team. Um, yeah. Clark, it's been wonderful to share this last hour with you. And you've been so patient as well with the internet and, and trying different things out. It, it's it's just been fantastic. But um, you're a lovely guy to talk to. And I, I can't wait to see you back racing next season and, um, you know, heading towards the Olympic regatta in Tokyo. Touch wood if it's going to, you know, be on, which we yeah. hope. Yeah, hopefully. All right. Well, thank you for having me. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, that's brilliant. Okay. See you, Clark. See ya. 